Hello and welcome. I'm very happy to report that today we are at Zhejiang International Circuit because we have been given the rare opportunity to drive one of the fastest electric cars ever made, the NEO EP9. It costs in excess of $2 million. It has 1,000 kilowatts or about 1,340 horsepower, and there are only 16 on the entire planet. This is either going to be the greatest day of my life so far, or if I crash it, the most expensive. Only one way to find out. The EP9 was the first vehicle produced by Chinese electric car maker Neo, and has served as a halo car for the brand ever since its debut in 2016. Soon after, it set a new fastest lap for an electric vehicle around the Nürburgring. Twice. While that time has since been beaten by the VW IDR, it remains an impressive feat for such a small company. I know we all want to get this thing on the track as quickly as possible, that includes myself, but it's worth stopping to talk about the exterior styling, because in my opinion, it's absolutely stunning. The first thing that catches your eye when you see it in person is just how wide it is. At 2.2 meters, that makes it wider than a Hummer H2. The next thing that you see is the flowing lines, but don't be fooled because every one of them serves a purpose. This one, for example, along here, leads into this area, which tunnels air into the rear uh, intakes behind the doors, therefore cooling the batteries. The body of the EP9 is built entirely from carbon fiber, including, of course, the carbon fiber tub. Here on the door sills is where we keep the batteries. There are two battery packs, one on each side, for a total of 90 kilowatt hours. These battery packs are built here for two reasons. The first is to keep them low in the car, lowering the center of gravity and improving performance, of course. The other is that by putting them here, it makes them more easy to swap. That's right, the batteries can be pulled out and replaced with fresh ones in the course of about eight minutes. Now, if you want to charge them, that will take about 45 minutes. The official range for this vehicle with the 90 kilowatt hour batteries is 427 kilometers. Of course, this vehicle will never ever see on get, get to the road, so that kind of number doesn't really have any meaning. The thing about modern supercars like this is that the aero bits you see on top of the car, well, they're really just the tip of the iceberg. A big rear wing like this, for example, serves a very important purpose, but there's also a whole heck of a lot going on underneath. Something that the EP9 makes very obvious with this absolutely massive diffuser. The interior of the EP9 matches its exterior in terms of both flowing lines and purposefulness. Everywhere is matte carbon fiber, especially here you can see on the tub in which it is built. The only real touches of color are here on the steering wheel, this gold in which in, there are embedded a series of simple buttons, including the lights. Uh, and then up here you have your DRS, that's drag reduction system, Formula One style here. Uh, the seating position is Formula One-esque as well. You're really more laying in the car than you are sitting. The other button I want to point out, the most important button, well, there's actually four of them. To start with, when you, begin, when you start the car, you need to start by starting the 12 volt button here. You push it. Then, as the car warms up, you can move it into the 750 volt position, after which you can then be ch begin choosing between your power modes one through four. Now, in order to get the fifth level, that is the one that's a full one megawatt or 1,340 plus horsepower, you have to hit the 3G button right here. Even five years after its debut, the specs of the EP9 are still highly impressive. Each of the supercar's wheels has its own 250 kilowatt electric motor and single ratio transmission from which the grand total of one megawatt, or 1,341 horsepower, is derived. Torque ain't so bad either, at 1,472 newton meters, or 1,091 pound-feet. At peak power, the EP9 can accelerate from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 2.7 seconds, and then on to a top speed of 313 kilometers per hour. Thing is, these were customer cars, and Neo wasn't interested in seeing their nearly $3 million electric hypercar getting put into a wall before it was put into customers' hands, so they limited us to power level 2 out of 5.
Before we got behind the wheel of the EP9, they gave us a few laps in an ES8, their midsize SUV. All right, so uh, now I've driven an ES8 on the track to get familiar with it. Now it's time to experience the EP9 first in the passenger seat with the driver behind the wheel. I think this is to kind of put the fear of God in me first before I get behind the wheel to give it a try. Let's see how it goes. And that's exactly what it did. I was already well aware of what this car could do in theory, but being taken around the track at speed gave me a whole new level of appreciation, and, as I had predicted, a whole new level of intimidation at the prospect of driving it myself. I had planned on talking during these first couple laps, but, well... Oh, oh wow. I'm, a, I'm afraid. I didn't say very much because I was trying to learn the track and also because uh, the G-forces are insane. My helmet was either pinned against this side or pinned against the chair this side or the seat. I guess it's time for me to drive it. This is gonna go well. I'm not worried at all, it'll be fine. All right, the pedals are now set up. I suppose there's nothing standing between me and getting on the track. Part of the reason the EP9 was so engaging was simply the sound. Unlike so many electric cars, which thrust you forward with an almost apathetic silence, the EP9 was full of whines and clunks that made it feel alive, that made it feel like a real race car. So, I'm on my first outlap here, and the, the first thing you notice is that the steering is incredibly direct. It's the closest approximation I can think of is a, is a go-kart, and I'm going very slow. I'm obviously not even approaching the, the, the beginnings of the limits, even in this power mode. Let's put the gas. Pretty quick. You ready? Wow, it breaks. <laughs> It'll really break. <laughs> I have a feeling if I didn't hit the gas all the way down, this thing has enough mechanical grip that I would never have to hit the brakes almost. One thing I'm noticing is that the shape of it is beautiful, but the size of the front fenders, you're sitting so low in the body that it's actually kind of hard to see the corners of the car. So I'm trying to avoid running over the the bumps in order to avoid upsetting the arrow and get used to not upsetting the arrow, but it's hard to do because you can't really see where the corner of the car is, especially having just gotten in it. Oops, gotta stick to the right side here. That was a little cut that one too tight. Went over the curbs there. That's a low. This car is very low. I gotta remember that. That one felt good. I mean, unlike this is obviously, I'm gonna say something obvious here that this is very much different than an ES8. This thing has obviously got, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going as fast as I dare and I'm just not even remotely approaching the mechan the levels of just mechanical adhesion. I'm not even going fast enough to really activate the arrow, I think.
Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Well, the first thing I'm gonna say is, it's really hot in there. I know it's kind of sad for me to get out of this extreme performance vehicle and then complain about how hot it is, but that just tells you how actually hot it is. Getting back to the way it actually drives in the second power mode. So we today haven't been able to experience the one megawatt power mode, that's level five. These are customer cars, which means that they're still waiting to be delivered to customers. And apparently they will not deliver them to customers having already used the one megawatt, megawatt mode. They're gonna be the customers, they're gonna be the first ones to use it. The other part of it is that apparently the team in the UK, Next EV, who does their uh, Formula E cars and who built this car are the ones that really know how to set it up for that mode. So they are keeping it in the level two power mode. So in that power mode, it has probably around the same horsepower as the ESA SUV that I drove. Um, but what is so amazing, what's so different about it is the level of mechanical grip that this thing has. I was not approaching speeds where I was going to be able to really take advantage of the uh, arrow on the car to most of the, to its highest extent, obviously, other than using the DRS on the straights, which did have a noticeable difference. The, the lack of drag when that big wing came down was, there was a big difference, but it was uh, overall, I mean, amazing. The levels of mechanical grip, the steering so direct, uh, very good feedback from that. It felt, it felt like a go-kart. Being an automotive reviewer here in China means that I get to drive a lot of fast electric cars. But while I've been mightily impressed by some of them, I have to admit that for all their speed, not a one of them was what I would call engaging. After ripping a few sub 4 second 0 to 100s, I inevitably yearn for the analog thrill of an internal combustion sports car. The Neo EP9 is the sole exception to that rule. Even though it was only at 2 out of 5 power level, it is still the most exciting thing I have ever done behind the wheel. The thing is, at $2 million plus dollars, that's kind of what I would expect. What I'm really waiting to see is who is going to be the one to produce the first affordable, engaging electric sports car for the masses. We're just going to have to wait and see. All right, that's all for today. Thank you so much for joining us, and be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell.